Well, hello, champs and chapics, and welcome to the Double Back Monthly for January 2018. This is a video blog that I set up in conjunction with my Patreon, but you don't have to be a Patreon to watch this and find out what it's about. What is it about? Well, the first section that I have, my review of reviews, review of reviews, speak English, Barry, is a section where I talk to you about all the work that I've done over the month of January and all the content that I've produced. After that, I go into my first and last section, which is a kind of run through of all the brand new games that I've played for the very first time and possibly for the very last time. After that, I go into a question time segment where I just answer a random question at random. And then I finish off with the prize draw, my monthly prize draw for those Patreons who have uh, contributed $5 or more to producing this show. Um, and so that's what's in this video and that's what I am about. No, it's not what I'm about. I'm about playing games. Anywho. Let's go and see what I've done. So what have I been up to over the month of January? It seems to have gone by really, really quickly. Um, I didn't really get up to much apart from family and celebrating. Mm. And I didn't get up to much video making either. Um, the only thing that I produced is a how to play video and a first impressions video for, well, it's not first impressions, it's 10th impressions, because I've played this game a lot, of the up and coming Kickstarter Batman, which is coming to a Kickstarter near you on February the 27th. You can go and check out those videos uh, by clicking the link which is on the screen or uh, looking at show notes below. I also managed to do a podcast with my podcasting buddy, Kevin Burkhard Smyre, on the Berkey and Badger board game babble thingy. I was gonna say show, but I changed my mind. And in that, we had a special guest. We had Chaz Marler from Paradise Paradise join us to talk about mass media. Are there too many people like myself doing this kind of thing where we're pumping out stuff about board games? Is it bloated? Is it pointless? Is there a favorite? Do you have a favorite? Do you have someone you don't like? Hmm, but there you go. That's what I've been doing in January. Very short, very sweet. Reviews are coming. Also some more Kickstarter videos are coming as well. And uh, definitely some podcasts. So uh, check them out when they turn up. So first and the last, brand new games that I've played for the first time. I've never played them before. And this is what I think about them. Are these games my cup of tea? Mm. So looking at my bat computer, I can see that there are one, two, and a three. There are four brand new games that I played. There's a Kickstarter, which would be a fifth, but um, I think I'll tell you about that another time when I do my Kickstarter video. Let's start at the top. We have Clans of Caledonia which is a worker placement game with a difference. On this modular board, players will be placing out workers and they will recuperate resources with those workers, which they will use to, to plant new things onto the board from a board that they have themselves. They have a bucket load of wooden components from other workers to sheep and cows, which will produce wool and milk. And you'll be able to have barrels, so you can make whiskey, you're gonna need fields that you're gonna grow. So the game is a kind of resource generation and you've got to expand your enterprise however you can in competition with the other players and each piece of terrain costs an, an, you know, an X amount of money and players will play in turn order, you know, buying a piece of land and then at the end, everyone will recuperate resources from the bits and pieces that they have which they'll be able to use in the next round and this plays over a certain amount of rounds and at the end, the player with the most points is the winner. Now, there are some end of game scoring, there's some end of round scorings which are different each time and you can play towards these to get your points. I found the game 
a nice kind of like puzzle and challenge as you're trying to outmaneuver the other players. There's some nice interaction, not just in the, the technical blocking of spaces from one another, but also in the fact that if you have a a piece of land next to someone else's piece of land, you can actually pay them for that resource that they're producing, which was a nice idea. Nobody did it in our game. It was a case of everybody kind of like digging up whatever they could get and using it to the best of their advantages. There was also this, there was these kind of tiles that you could buy in the market at the beginning. They were free, you'd get them for nothing, but at the end of the game, they were very, very expensive to pay for but they were contracts that you could fulfill if you had the resources, you could fulfill them, which would give you points. Really nice kind of brain bender. Definitely my cup of tea. Um, a bit simple on the old components factor and the, the look of the game, but it was enjoyable and it was a challenge. And that was Clans of Caledonia. The next game is an old favorite of many people, myself included. So is this a brand new game or not? Well, technically it is. It's the Game of Thrones Catan. Yes, you get to play Catan, Brotherhood of the Watch, but with Game of Thrones thrown in. The game has a slightly different layout board. Um, it's rectangular, more than a hexagon size board, but then you're doing the same thing. You're planting some colonies and some um, villages and you are recuperating resources at the roll of a dice. But you're also using these resources to build uh, workers to work on the wall. Yes, there's this wall at the north of the board and monsters will be coming down. White walkers, giants, um, it's basically wildlings really more than white walkers, I'm uh, sorry to say. But uh, they are approaching the wall and then they will try to breach the wall or kill the guards guarding the wall. The game will end in two kind of ways, like the normal way where one player gets 10 points, or if uh, X amount of warriors have breached the wall, then the game will end and it'll be the player with the most warriors still on the wall that will win the game. Yeah, sour taste in my mouth. I don't know if this kind of like enhances the game or makes it worse. There were player powers, you could take on a roll, like you could take on Sam Tali and then use his power on your turn and then change the power for another power. You get someone else in, you know, the blackfish or whatever. But it just, I don't know, it just kind of added a layer which I didn't think Catan needed. Catan is a lot of dice rolling luck. And there's a third dice. Every time you roll your two dice to generate resources, the third dice is rolled and that will tell you if, you know, monsters will try to breach the wall and it is a strange game because you want to build things but the time you build something that would generate monsters which would line up behind the wall like a queue to a toilet and then this dice would dictate if they were actually going to attack the wall. As you can tell, I don't know, I don't know, I just prefer a basic Catan in regards to this. I might play it again, it's in the middle, it's not really my cup of tea. I like Catan, I like the challenge, I like the friendliness and the easiness of the game. I, I like the luck because, you know, again, you may build your, your, your houses around the eights and sixes and might generate nothing. But, um, yeah, not too bad, but, nah. Okagenon, uh, Valley of the Lakes. I can't pronounce it, but uh, this game is a Carcassonne based game. So we're talking about Catan, but now we're talking about Carcassonne. <laughs> um, it's a tile laying game. Players are going to be laying a tile on their turn and they're going to place a token on that tile. The tile laying, you're building up generated lands. You're, you're trying to like enclose a water area on the map that you're building or a forest area or a mountain area. And there are resources in these areas. And if you close it up, you get first pick of those resources. And depending on what piece you've used to place on the tile will determine how many bits of resources that you get. And you're getting these resources because you've got this handful of cards and these cards are like you, how you're gonna score points at the end of the game. If you've got like combinations of two resources, you're gonna get four points for each combination. Uh, if you've just got this resource, you get two points for each one of those resources that you have. It's it's a very simplistic game. It's very colorful. There, there's also other things you can activate powers which are on the back of the tiles that are visible because you're gonna have four piles of tiles and every time that you've played a tile, you'll, you'll pick up a new one. You can either use the power that's on the back of it before you use it 
and it, it was it was interesting it was really really it did remind me of Carcassonne so much more in the vein of Wooly Bully because Wooly Bully is about making enclosures whereas Carcassonne is about making routes and enclosures and, and strategically placing your people whereas this was more about you know you had to place one of your pieces and you just had to use the right piece at the right time you, uh, which would either give you one resource two resources or four resources so Judging what the other players are going to play, it, it was a real challenge. Um, I really like this game. It's really colourful. It's really simplistic. And again, if you've played Carcassonne already, you'll have a good like foot up on this game. And it just, you know, when we put it, put it on the table, it was like an instant challenge. We dialed straight in because we recognised the game and we figured out the mechanics and we figured out our strategies and how we were going to play. And we played. Really enjoyable, definitely my cup of tea. Uh, I don't know, maybe it might replace Carcassonne, but yeah. Okaganon, Valley of the Lakes. Last but not least, I finally got an expansion to the table, which I've been wanting to get to the table for a long time, and that is the expansion Splendor. Now, I've only played one of the expansions in it, which was the cities, and the cities basically give you uh, objectives. And so instead of the game finishing at when someone passes 15 points, um, the game will finish if one player achieves one of the objectives and they take that tile. Very nice idea. It doesn't add much at all, really. But um, the, the other expansions will add different things. Uh, there's another one which adds a different market. There's another one which lets you put builders on the cards, which means that players, other players can't take that card. And there's a lot of like moving about these workers. And then there's another one which activates special powers, which I'm looking forward to actually playing next, I think. But um, the cities itself, having these different objectives, you don't know which player is gonna go, if a player is gonna go for this one, or that one, or that one. Really enjoyable, because I love Splendor. I love the challenge. Again, it's a game that I know like the back of my hand, and it is just a case of, you know, this game is you against me, and I wanna kick your ass. And it's, it, you know, you, there's no frustration at the end of the game when you've lost because it's just determination, I'm gonna get you next time. That's, um, yeah, Splendor, the um, expansion. And the last game would be, would have been Immortal 8, but I'll talk about more about that later when I get the actual prototype coming through. But um, yeah, that's, that's quite a lot of nice new games that I have played. Let's talk about apps. It's not very apt weather, and uh, I have an appetite to walk in the snow. Idiot. No, let's talk about board game apps. Now, they seem to come in two varieties. I'm talking about this because recently I've just started playing Manchester Madness again, which is app dependent. But that's not the only game that I've played with an app. And it got me thinking, are apps appropriate for board games? Now apps work on two different levels. The first level is they act as an AI controlling elements behind the game. The second type of app is an app which holds, you know, the information that the players need to figure out. And so it just basically holds this information and lets the player play the game as was. But the, 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 the app just, as I said, holds like the mastermind. Talking of mastermind, one of the games that does that is the game Rising 5, in which the app will hold a little bit of information. So for example, it will hold the position of the runes, what colour runes there are, they are, and the players have to play the game to access the app to figure out what those, what that formation is. And that's fine and perfect, as long as the app is, you know, it works in a way that is simple for the players to interact with, so they can just click the right buttons and there's no fiddly stuff. And that's fine, and it works. Another game like um, The Alchemist, again, it holds the information, it holds the coordinates of which ingredients when you mix together make what kind of potion. And again, the players will be doing actions which will allow them 
to activate the app so they can try and figure out and deduce what uh, the app has decided is what corresponds with what. And again, that works really well. Again, it's a simple system. Um, and then it becomes a more of a kind of a player challenge trying to figure it out. One is obviously uh, uh, a cooperative game, so everyone's playing together trying to figure out everything. And the other one is a competitive game where everyone is trying to figure out different things about the, 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 the format. And in those circumstances, the game works well, personally for me. But let's talk about apps where the game is actually challenging the player, where the app is against the player. And those kind of apps like Descent or the Star Wars Imperial Assault or even Matches of Madness, it has an AI. And this AI is not tracking everything that you do because otherwise it would be much more simpler just to make a game, uh, a computer game, where it tracks your movements and tracks your actions. But in this case, the app actually dictates to you actions that the AI is going to take. And you have to, you know, put those actions to the best of your ability onto the board of the game. And the game on the board. Yeah. And uh, that can be that can be slightly challenging if the text actually contradicts what is actually taking place on the board. Um, and so I've seen, uh, for example, between Descent and the Star Wars Imperial Assault, that has changed a bit. They, they made it a bit more simplified what the um, AI actions are, and so it can correspond to practically everything. And it's basically making a, a list of commands that the player will have to go through to, to act out a kind of remnant of an AI. Now, one of the things that it, this kind of runs into is that you lose the, I don't know, the storytelling in a way. If you're playing with a human player, obviously they're gonna be maybe sympathetic if you're being slaughtered. Um, <laughs> or they might forget to do an action which would have won them the game. And so it's a case of, you know, you lose that kind of humanness of the game. It becomes very robotically programmed and anything can happen and probably will happen and you will probably be crushed. Again, I found with these apps, they are very, very, they are very crushing. They, they try to force you to do things that you wouldn't normally do if you were playing against a human. And they force you to, to calculate every possibility uh, possible to make you win. And sometimes you can't always win against an app because it's just the way that it is. It might be like random card draws or random dice rolls. But um, the, the apps become a really, really tough enemy. And you are forced to play in an, another method that you, you wouldn't have normally played. Another type of app is an app which just adds ambience to the game, like the app Sirenscape, which is just a generic, you know, sound effects bank um, with generated uh, ambient themes um, and effects and music that you can play along, which will just, you know, enhance your gaming in a way. So you got, there you go, three different types of app which are used with board gaming. Uh, the benefits and the negatives. Well, the benefits are you can play with less players. Yeah, you can practically play with one person. One person can play a game all on their own with the, with the thanks to the app, which will just let them, you know, play against a AI of some sort. Other benefits are it, there's logical information which has been withheld inside the app, which won't screw up unless the players screw up. You know how many times you've played uh, Cluedo and what's happened? Someone accidentally didn't tell you the right information, making the game impossible to win. There are the ambient factor. The, 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 the apps actually take you a bit more deeper into the game, not just with the sound effects and music which comes with the apps, but also with the, they had a certain je ne sais quoi to the ambience themselves in regards to uh, Matches of Madness, this flavored text that you could just have generically from cards. Again, having that flavored text on an app diminishes the amount of cards that you have to sort through and tidy up at the end of the game and at the beginning of the game. Bonus, but negative effects. Games feel a little bit less human. There's a slight dehumanization factor 
when you're playing against opponents, they are always human and they will make errors and they will maybe go gentle on you or may attack you harshly. Whereas an app is what it's programmed to do. And we don't know what that's programmed to do. We don't know if it's programmed to be harsh or if it's programmed to be kind or, you know, unless we choose a, like a selection at the beginning saying make this game easy, make this game hard. And now I'm back in the warm. Um, I just thought of another one. A game which uses an app which uses your phone as a playing piece, like in the world of Yoho, where you're actually putting your phones on the board itself and playing the game with that. Is that a wise idea? Do we just want like a, a board game with just one app being run? Or do we want one where everybody has a iPhone, smartphone, whatever, and a tablet to play the one game? Hmm. So that's apps and games. What do you think? Do you think they are a great idea, a great addition to the hobby? Do you think they just stick out like sore thumbs? Do you think that they, they are good ideas but they, they haven't been utilized correctly at the moment and it just requires someone coming up with some kind of design which will make it perfect? Um, let us know your thoughts, write some comments in the comment box below. I'm gonna get in, it's bloody cold out here. But I need to do some physical activities. I can't just be sat at a table all the time, can I? <laughs> no. <laughs> so now we're to that part of the video show, whatever you want to call it, where you've all you've all been waiting for it. It's the prize draw. Yes, every month. I do a prize draw for uh, my Patreons who have pledged over the $5 limit. Uh, this gives them a chance to win something. Yes, you too can uh, win something or maybe just get yourself some promos by just throwing a few pennies my way. And look what has happened in the past month since you've been throwing pennies my way. I went out and used those pennies to buy these reflective photographic uh, lights which will allow me to, uh, to light up everything a lot more clearer than the, the natural lighting that I have in this room, which means that you can see a lot more detail in the art and the components in general, okay? Uh, so, there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert, Curly T, Elephant Girl, Kevin, Olivier, Andrew, and of course, Mr. Grogan. Your contributions have helped pave the way for clearer, precise video making. <laughs> Not that clear as you can see because I've still got this game on the table and it's been sat here for two days and I haven't put it away yet due to the fact that I said to myself, well, when I do my monthly video, I need to use this game for the prize draw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, Robert, I have lined you up with this guy, William, here. Yes, Robert and William sound like two corresponding names. We have Rita, who is going to be Curly T, because I think she's got curly hair as well. And then we have Wendy Adams, who's going to be Elephant Girl, who looks, she does kind of look like Elephant Girl a bit there. And then we have uh, Father Mitio, who I've put with that guy who is more than a father to me, that's Kevin. And then we have down here a guy which clashes completely with the guy because Olivier, who is a very French name, is going to be Preston, which is a very English name. Hmm, very nice, sir. Yes, so I'm going to take these cards I'm going to shuffle them and then I'm going to deal one out and that will be the winner of this month's prize draw. Yes! Cool, huh? That's a good idea. So what's coming? Well, I am planning to do a review this week for Codenames because it's a game that I've been playing a lot over Christmas um, with family and friends, which is great. Um, it's one of those games which just kind of like says, you know, play me and have fun. Um, I'm hoping to get some more video reviews done, like for Eldorado and Photosynthesis. 
Pff, Dungeon Pets has been on the back burner for a long time. Maybe I'll get around to that soon. But you know, there are some Kickstarters which are coming in as well. So I need to do those videos as well. So there's lots coming on, lots going on. I've got podcasts to edit as well for Berkey and Badger. I've got music to do for the Seventh Continent. I'm also helping out with some of the Kickstarters that you're gonna be seeing as well. So lots going on. So let's see who our winner is. I flip this card over and it is Wendy Adams, which means elephant girl. I don't know how you do it. You just, you should go on the lottery or something. You've won again this month i will send you something wonderful in the post what you'll have to wait and see okay so that all that remains for me to do is say thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed this video give it a like if you want to share it with someone that might enjoy this or might even sponsor me you know patronize me then do so um and um have a good month of gaming and look out for some more stuff so, ciao for now, and remember to please play nicely with each other. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good? I got some more games.